What's up, good people? It's your boy, DJ the Park Boy. We in the building. Welcome to a new episode of the Lime Show. And today, guess what? I'm Canadian for a day, because guess what? My boy Drake just dropped, and that shit is fire. It's fire. Of course, I'm biased. I'm biased. I'm a Drake stand. I knew it was coming with fire. I already knew it was going to be fire. So I don't know if you want to just take my opinion, because guess what? Drake can't do no wrong to me. That boy been golden since he proved me right. I I think I told the story before. The first time I ever heard Drake, I came back and I told uh my older brother, hey, he is next. He's going to be the one. The one. And then it happened. I mean, you know, with music and entertainment, some things like that is luck of the draw. But he ends up becoming that guy. So... I don't let them forget that at all. Never. I'm the one who called Drake. And now he here. We certified lover boys. You know, I'm a I feel like I was a certified lover boy. I used to be, you know, in my past life. I don't know. I'm a happily committed man. Shout out to my baby. <laughs> my baby boo. <laughs> I'm gonna get into that later, man. You know, we're gonna get into that later, man. I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. But Drake is here. So I guess we're going to get into, uh, you know, them reviews been coming in pretty fast. The album did get a little delayed. It, uh, I think they said it took like what? It came out around like two. But, you know, it's Drake. He's destroying the internet. This is going to be his month. Uh, anybody who really thought it was going to be a competition between Donda and, and Certified Lover Boy? Again, from what I heard from Donda, I've enjoyed it. Drake's just on a different level. Kanye's not the same. He doesn't give the same music that he gave some years back. You know, there's been changes in his life. There's, he's trying to reinvent gospel music. And, you know, gospel ain't everybody's jam. But Drake know how to find a jam for you. He knows how to find a jam. And he uh, plays perfect on that fence from trying to be like a R&B superstar slash rap superstar. Slash pop superstar. Gotta give him credit with credit due. I have to give that boy credit with credit is due. Like, he did it. He's doing it. He He's definitely doing it. He is definitely doing it. And, oh, I'm trying to be difficult. There we go. Let's get into this review. Five takeaways from Drake's certified lover boy. So we're going to skip past this filler. They say the first takeaway is Drake still doesn't know what he wants. Says, as you could tell by the description above, the theme of certified lover boy are all over the place. It's unclear if the 34 year old heartbreaker. Is desperate to settle down or if he wants to live the rest of his life closing out cocktail bars and sending late night texts. <clears throat> I just want to say the boy is only 34. Does he have to go you know, start a family now while he's in this superstar mode? I mean, that'll make some people happy, but you know, he got to do him. You got to do what's going to make him happy. And I mean, <sighs> when you single, sometimes you want to settle down. I mean, probably most times you want to settle down. You want to give things a try. But you got to realize not everybody is worth settling down with. Not everybody's worth settling down with. Just because she's a pretty face doesn't mean she has personality or anything else, any other qualities that he may want. Uh, I've been there as a single man, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to sit back and play the field until, you know, you make the right catch. You have to play the field like it's baseball until you make the right catch. You can't just be jumping out there all willy-nilly trying to make love happen with everybody. Because guess what? It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to work that way. Uh that love at first sight thing doesn't happen too often for most people, I guess. You know, you got to work your way into that. You got to build that up. Uh, you got to build trust and all of that with some people. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 
Because people will take advantage of you. I'm pretty sure he's dealt with women who want to take advantage of him because he's Drake. He has money. He has popularity. He has status. Those are things people want in today's time. So, coming from a single perspective, I want to sit right there and knock Drake if he, you know, he still ain't letting you know what he really wants. Like, who? Who wrote this? If a guy wrote this, I'd be upset. Alfonsi Pierre. I think I said that right. Let me click on it and see what we get. Uh, it just brings up other reviews. I wanted to see a picture. Because that is a weird way to start an article, I think, if you're a man. Say Drake doesn't know what he wants. And? <laughs> Ah, so it looks like it is a guy. Again, that that's totally weird for me to. That would be my first thing I go look at from a Drake album is whether he wants to be in a relationship or not. That's that man business. Again, can't force love on nobody. So let's get to the next one. No new friends. For years, Drake seemed to take pride in sharing the spotlight. With fresh face up and comers. But now that his popularity has become so unmovable, and perhaps because streaming only rewards name recognition anyway, he's largely given up scouting new talent. This made yesterday's uh, publicity stunt where he revealed uh, the records, guests via billboards, placed in their uh, hometowns. Oh, placed in their hometowns, kind of um, uh, underwhelming. My bad, yeah. I, I had slow moments sometimes. That was one of them. Definitely one of them right there. Uh, it's also the light. You know, the lights here. It's hitting you in the eyes. Bouncing all my glasses, y'all see it. And that reflection's extra in your ear. I'm just going to blame it on me being a little, you know, having a moment. But, uh, yeah. Hmm, I actually kind of like the promo. I thought it was different, unique. Nobody else I've really seen do that. They went to everybody's hometown to let them know, guess what? They on the album. And if in your hometown you kind of run your hometown, people going to be, you know, more inclined to at least go see what that person said. If I'm not even a Drake fan, which, is, you know, it's going to be hard to find somebody who's not really a Drake fan or nobody who's out here hearing Drake music because he's just that big. You can't escape Drake. The The atmosphere... Around Drake is just humongous. So I don't know if I'm pretty sure there's people out there who don't, but it's hard to escape Drake. I mean, he had Young Thug on it, love me some Young Thug. He had Future on it, love me some Future. Twenty One Savage, love me some Twenty One Savage. Uh, Dirt. I really became a huge Dirk fan probably late. I was late to the party. Shout out to my girl, she put me on. I was definitely late to the uh the Dirk party. Dirk, extremely talented, extremely talented, and then not and that's not to say I was not listening to Dirk early on. I just kind of moved on as you know time progressed, and he was still dropping some really great music. So that's my fault for missing out on that. Lil baby, he's been out here killing. Like I mean, he's been out here killing. He's a sniper right now. And, I mean, he has Travis Scott. They've done plenty of music together. Jay-Z, Ross, Wayne. I'm not mad at the features. I'm definitely not mad. He has some of my favorite people up here. So, I'm not mad at the features. Of course, somebody might have wanted some some younger people on there. Uh, but guess what? They just ain't make the cut. It's... uh. Artistically, you get to decide who makes the cut and who doesn't make the cut. And I guess they just didn't make the cut. Again, I'm going to be a Drake Avenger. So, I mean, this is my first time reading this article. I, I had no biases or anything like that coming in here. I was just taken aback from that first paragraph. Like, he doesn't want love. I've never heard another man say that to another man. But that's... That, <laughs> I guess that's a, you know, I don't know. I says the Drake beat selection blueprint. Drake definitely chose uh, 
a lot of, lot of more artistically type beats. I haven't finished the whole album. Trust me. I was supposed to uh, stay up, listen to it last night, but I was knocked out. I'm talking about snoring. I woke up early this morning, and I was like, hey, I'm going to go ahead and start the show at like 4 o'clock this morning. But guess what I did? Didn't make it to doing that, so I'm here now. But I've definitely listened to uh, the majority of the album so far. And, again, I enjoy it. He's rapping, rapping. Uh, IG caption contenders. Uh, they say these are probably going to be... You know when Drake drops, people take his lyrics and turn them into IG captions. It just happens. He's that iconic. He's one of those guys. He's one of those goats. Because rap actually has... um, they, You have to put him in different levels when it comes to goatism. You have to go by generation almost. Because if you don't go generationally, you're naturally going to... uh. Miss out on so many people who are pioneer rap. Those founding fathers are important to the blueprint to what we have today. So that's why I would say you would have to do it by generation. Because uh, rap switches generations about like every four to five years. Sometimes even faster than that is just like a, it just switches. So for somebody to have longevity throughout multiple generations of types of music, then, you know, you got to give them their flowers. Definitely have to give him his flowers. Of course, uh, let's read some of these. Cashman knits for the nighttime boat rides. I can see somebody saying that, you know. We have a lot of fun on boats. We do do that. So I can definitely see some of them captions flying off. This one's mine's right here. I've been losing friends and finding peace. Honestly, that sounds like a fair trade to me. Boss. Boss. I enjoyed that line, but it, it definitely reminded me of one of my friend's songs who actually came out, you know, about like two months ago. And I know Drake being in Memphis. I'm not saying he stole, but it definitely sounds close to my friend's song because that thing crank. You know what I'm saying? That thing cranks. Uh, matter of fact, while I'm saying that, y'all go look it up. Uh, cool ass Tino. Ben, fire. That came out about like two months ago. Fire. I had to let him know as soon as it dropped. Fire, 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 fire. I ain't saying Drake took anything, but the concepts are really similar. But that bar is fire, you know what I'm saying? I've been losing friends and finding peace. It happens like that sometimes because you figure out some people will anchor you down. Don't let anybody anchor your peace. No matter who they are, friends. Family, girlfriend, boyfriend, anybody in between, do not let anybody anchor your peace. Because guess what? Loving yourself is the most important thing. And when you love yourself, it's easier for you to love other people. But you have to love yourself first. You know what I'm saying? Uh, man, fuck her respectfully. I just want my respect. Pew, pew. Those shots for Justin LaBoy. Respectfully. Stay on your side of the fence. Boy, don't jump out there with Drake. Don't do that. You know, you chose sides. You chose the wrong side in this case. Because guess what? We're going to be certified lover boys the rest of this year. You know what I'm saying? I'm Canadian for a day. And I'm riding with my man Drake. Pew, pew. Shots fire. Don't play with that boy. He out here. Uh, Said you belong to the streets. But the streets belong to me. It's like home to me. That's that single life right there. You know what I'm saying? She been kicked back to the streets. But guess what? The streets is where I occupy. So I will see her. I'm going to see her, you know. She going to come around when she outside to play. We, we got the game of tag going on. And guess what? You're it. That's what he telling her. You're it. It's your turn. <laughs> it is your turn. I, I like that one, man. You know what I'm saying? Picture me caring what a nigga saying on Wi-Fi they don't pay for. Those for the people still living with their moms, not paying no bills. Still, you know, bottom of the basement, not paying no bills. That's for them. There's definitely some broke-ass people with too much time on their hands. 
and they will troll. They will talk shit. Like, if you got time for, to go get some money, you got time to go get some money. You don't have time for the trolling and all that. So I feel them with that. Loyalty is priceless, and it's all I need. I feel that. I definitely feel that. Uh, and it says Drake's growing up problems. Let's see what that is. Uh, I mean, around the time last year, Tusi Slide, Drake's shamelessly lazy version of a viral TikTok hit. I don't get why everybody saying this was a, a, a shamelessly lazy version of a viral TikTok hit. First of all, Tusi Slide was a hit. It, it, it did what it was supposed to do. It definitely did what it was supposed to do. It got everywhere. Uh, for people to say it's lazy, to call somebody art lazy is a subjective statement. What you may perceive as lazy, you don't realize it takes a genius to continuously write hits or get hits out. It's a skill to craft songs that the masses want to consume. It is a skill. That's why usually the best rappers aren't the best lyricists. They're not. The songs you hear on rotation in the radio aren't the most lyrical songs. They're made to feed the masses. The masses. It's a skill to get a majority of people to agree this is an enjoyable thing. As we see with uh, a lot of different things. like Not everybody's going to agree. But when you do get somebody to come to that consensus, you're in a winning position. And that's why I feel Drake is. I mean, I don't even want to finish this article. It's just been a little uh, underwhelming pitchfork. Underwhelming. Uh, Alphonse. It's been underwhelming. Alphonse. Pierre. I want to know is that his real name? Alphonse Pierre. Where are you from, my guy? <laughs> Talking about Drake's love life. That amazes me right there. You know what I'm saying? How do you wake up and say, hey, I'm going to write about whether Drake's in love or not. That is what I'm feeling today. <laughs> I would pass on that one. I, I ain't touching that one, man. You know what I'm saying? I would pass on writing that one. If my first subject in the uh, article is, does Drake want to find love? Does he want to be single forever? Like, did your girl give you that one? Or who gave you that one? Or say, hey, that's it. That is it. No, it's not. Try it again. Thank you. Like, man. <laughs> that what I got a right to be on Pitchfork? Is that what I got a right to get featured on Pitchfork? Talk about other males' love lives in that way? Should he be looking for love? He's 35 now. He's becoming an older man. It's time for him to start his family. Okay. You know. <clears throat> Don't write that when you got a Drake Avenger around. Because I'm going to smack that shit down. Every chance I get. You hear me? I'm riding with my boy. I am riding with my guy. Period. As the city girls will say. Period. <laughs> I'm just saying, y'all, man. Drake Avenger. I'm here, baby. I am here. So, I'm really excited about this story right here. This story is one of those stories that put me in big kid mode. Gets me excited. Because guess what? They announced the next verses. And guess who it is? Guess who it is? The one and only Ja Rule. It's the Rule, baby. And guess what? They got Fat Joe. This going to be a hell of a battle. Because when I say hits, on hits, on hits, on hits, on both sides, Fat Joe, in my opinion, has one of the most underrated careers overall wise. He's been around. I think he dropped his first song when I was, like, a baby. Like, when I was, like, one or something like that. Fat Joe has been around forever. And he always comes back. Every about two years. Well, for hit. 
You know, just come back with a little, little regular record. He come back with something that's on radio rotation. And John Rubin, he had his run. Nobody could have predicted 50 Cent. I'm just going to say that John Rubin was on top of the world. He was on top of the world. Nobody could predict 50 Cent and everything playing out the way it did. Nobody could have predicted, I mean... We caught, We probably could have predicted, you know, the feds trying to mess with their business, you know, because everybody who tried to come together and unite at that one time all had issues dealing with the government, federal agents, or, you know, a lot of different stuff. That's for you guys to go really look that up, like Rapid Lab, Murder, Inc., uh, Death Row, and I forgot what was the last label. They were all coming together to do a distribution deal, and then the feds came. We're just going to put it as that. Uh, go check out J. Prince's book. He talks about how they they had a hit on him, basically, trying to kill him. Crazy. But, yeah. So, we're right here on Revolt. And it says, Fat John Ja Rule are the next MCs to go head-to-head for verses. The battle is set to go down in New York City on Tuesday, September the 14th at 9 p.m. Whoo, that's right around the corner, man. We are officially 11 days away from that. 11 days away from that. That's going to be lit. And you know what's great about that? They smart. They're going to do it the day after, like, Monday Night Football. Because football's back. So don't even anybody trying to compete with football. You'll be a fool. Don't do it. People love their football, and it's back. People are going to uh, consume their football. They dominate TV ratings and things and people's attention. So don't pick a Tuesday. That's like a great marketing thing right there. You know? Uh, so the article goes on to say both artists have major hits under their belts. Ja Rule and Murder Inc. had the game in a chokehold in the late 90s, early 2000s. He's not lying. Domination. Domination. Uh, said so they had tracks like uh, Put It On Me, Always On Time, Living It Up, Between Me And You, Mesmerize, Holla, Holla, Down Ass Bitch. But Joey Crack definitely has a lot of hits as well. Lean Back, All The Way Up, Another Round, So Excited, What's Love. Uh, this battle to me is going to be determined by... Who can uh, dictate the way the records come out? Because both of them have hits. Both of them have women songs. Both of them have street songs. Both of them have club bangers. Both of them got hits. And I probably expect them to do like uh, New York at the end of the show. Since Fat Joe's on that song, I probably expect them to do that. Uh... The Ja Rule battle, most people actually wanted was 50 and Ja Rule. I did not think that was going to happen. Uh, it even says that in the, uh, uh, this article right here. Initially, Ja wanted to go up against uh, Arch Nemesis, 50 Cent, in the versus battle. Uh, he told Fat Joe last year he wanted all the smoke and that he'll behave. But that's tough. I like uh, the way Gucci Man and Jeezy went down, I don't see either one of them having the restraint of Jeezy. Uh, Jeezy, in that case, you know, R.P. Pookie Lope, he ain't my guy. That was Jeezy's guy who was sent on the mission to end up dying. In this case, you had 50 Cent, who his life was on the line. I don't think I could ever forgive somebody who was involved in me almost losing my life. So I, I definitely don't see how that situation would have played out. But I'm definitely interested with this verse about it because how couldn't I be? Fat Joe has hits. Ja Rule has hits. Uh, again, I'm just going to be interested to see how they play this because it's going to come down to how the records come out, in my opinion. Is uh that's gonna be the determining factor to who wins uh in that situation. Uh so it's time for some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? We gotta get into it. Uh 
this story was a little crazy, you know. Definitely a little crazy. So, uh, Summer Walker in London on the track. They've been going back and forth on Instagram. Uh, just been a nasty breakup to their relationship. Nasty, nasty, nasty. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it sucks to be in those, uh, to be in a relationship and not uh, end it gracefully. I know not all relationships end that way. Most relationships end bad. But you hope when you have kids that some of this will just try to work its way out. But it always seems to make things worse. So, Summer Walker took to Instagram and wrote that her ex had blocked her. Uh, says the saga began... The saga between Summer Walker and London on the track continue in a recent Instagram post. The singer slammed the ex, calling him a ghetto baby daddy from hell. The thing that's so funny about this situation is it kind of relates to the manosphere in a way. Uh, when it says some women just want Pookie and Ray Ray's. No offense to London, I don't know you. I do not know you. Uh, so I don't know if you're a ghetto baby daddy or not. I don't know. I just know the shit that gets out into the public. But what I learned from this situation was when Summer Walker and him was dating, she had to deal with all the baby mama drama from not one, but two different baby mamas. Then she proceeds to still let him get her pregnant. And now she says she's dealing with the shit the other baby mamas had to deal with because she felt she was so special. You're not. No offense, Summer Walker. You make beautiful music. Beautiful music. I'd be lying if I said you didn't. You make really great music, but guess what? Stop trying to change people. I had a whole show about that. You cannot change people. They have to grow into who they're going to be. They have to become who they're going to be. You cannot force them to do anything different. You set yourself up for failure believing somebody will be special for you. Learn to like people for who they are. Learn to love people for who they are. Learn to... uh. Understand, people are who they're going to be. I can't expect you to change. You have to want to change yourself. I mean, I don't even want to get into those. It, it just not. This is another case of stop trying to change people. Because now you make yourself look even Stupider because now you used to argue with the old baby mamas. Now you're the, the baby mama calling him the ghetto ass baby daddy, and now the other baby mamas come on saying, You're crazy, you're crazy. And then you got to come out and defense say, I'm not crazy. Remember when the shoe was on the other foot? No, I let him have you. And now I give him back to you, and now I'm the crazy one. Y'all all look stupid, really. Your kids is going to come back and say, Hey. My parents participated in the circus. That's all I'm saying. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm looking at it the wrong way. But I don't think I'm looking at it the wrong way. I think I'm seeing the ghetto in it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Whew, so this, uh, this story was like, damn. Not again. Not again. Hey, y'all young dudes love shoot, love busting in the wrong pussy, bruh. So, there's been rumors going around that uh, LaMelo Ball, who plays for the Charlotte Hornets, is now the, uh, the father of IG model Anna Montana's unborn child. So, Here's some pre-context. Uh, hey, Mike. Mike Jordan. 
the guy I love to defend as the goat of basketball, the basketball god, Michael Jordan. If you don't teach these young niggas how to wrap up their dicks, you're failing. You're failing the community right now. If you don't teach them how to wrap it up. It's a song out there called 3-6 Mafia, Don't Be Scared. And as a kid, it taught me not to be Jimmy. Because he got a bad case of the drip drop for not wrapping it up. Now, Melo don't have a drip drop, but it looks like he drip dropped in some... uh. He drip dropped in something and now he has a bun in the oven. Uh, so right here the article says, on the court, LaMelo Ball has swiftly become the face of the Charlotte Hornets. Off the court, the youngest Ball brother has been spied again cozy with a handful of different women. Yes, he has. He's been out here living his best NBA life. Openly living his best NBA life. Uh, it also says the 20-year-old Hornet star has most recently been linked to 32-year-old Instagram model Anna Montana. Recently posted pictures on an IG story with the two together have many convinced they have been seeing each other. It says the latest rumor surrounding the Hornet star that has Twitter buzzing is that Anna Montana may actually be pregnant and... Lamelo Ball, excuse me, and Lamelo Ball as a uh, with Lamelo Ball being assumed as the father, says Montana had a post and uh, posted and later deleted a tweet and Instagram. Hey, we certified level boys. You know, I'm a. I feel like I was a certified level boy. I used to be. You know, in my past life, I don't know. I'm a happily committed man. Shout out to my baby. <laughs> my baby boo. <laughs> I'm going to get into that later, man. You know, we're going to get into that later, man. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. But Drake is here. So I guess we're going to get into, uh, you know, them reviews been coming in pretty fast. The album did get a little delayed. It, uh, I think they said it took like what? It came out around like two. But, you know, it's Drake. He's destroying the internet. This is going to be his month. Uh, anybody who really thought it was gonna be a competition between Donda and and Certified Lover Boy? Again, from what I heard from Donda, I've enjoyed it. Drake's just on a different level. Kanye's not the same. He doesn't give the same music that he gave some years back. You know, there's been changes in his life. There's, he's trying to reinvent gospel music, and you know, gospel ain't everybody's jam. But Drake know how to find a jam for you. He knows how to find a jam. And he uh, plays perfect on that fence from trying to be like a R&B superstar slash rap superstar slash pop superstar. Got to give him credit what credit due. I have to give that boy credit what credit is due. Like, he did it. He's doing it. He He's definitely doing it. He is definitely doing it. It and oh, I'm trying to be difficult. There we go. Let's get into this review. Five takeaways from Drake's certified lover boy. So we're gonna skip past this filler. They say the first takeaway is Drake still doesn't know what he wants. Says, as you could tell by the description above, the theme of certified lover boy are uh, all over the place. It's unclear if the 34 year old heartbreaker is desperate to settle down or if he wants to live the rest of his life closing out cocktail bars and sending late night texts. <clears throat> I just want to say the boy is only 34. Does he have to go, you know, start a family now while he's in this superstar mode? I mean, that'll make some people happy, but, you know, he got to do him. He got to do what's going to make him happy, and I mean, <sighs> when you single, sometimes you want to settle down. I mean, probably most times you want to settle down. You want to give things a try, but you got to realize not everybody is worth settling down with. 
not everybody's worth selling down with. Just because she's a pretty face doesn't mean she has personality or anything else, any other qualities that he may want. Uh, I've been there as a single man, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to sit back and play the field until, you know, you make the right catch. You have to play the field like it's baseball until you make the right catch. You can't just be jumping out there all willy-nilly trying to make love happen with everybody. Because guess what? It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to work that way. Uh, That love at first sight thing doesn't happen too often for most people, I guess. So, you know, you got to work your way into that. You got to build that up. Uh, you got to build trust and all of that with some people. You know what I'm saying? Uh. Because people will take advantage of you. I'm pretty sure he's dealt with women who want to take advantage of him because he's straight. He has money. He has popularity. He has status. Those are things people want in today's time. So coming from a single perspective, I want to sit right there and knock Drake if he, you know, he still ain't letting you know what he really wants. Like, who? Who wrote this? If a guy wrote this, I'd be upset. Alfonsi Pierre. I think I said that right. Let me click on it and see what we get. Uh, it just brings up other reviews. I wanted to see a picture. Because that is a weird way to start an article, I think, if you're a man. Say Drake doesn't know what he wants. And... <laughs> Ah, so it looks like it is a guy. Again, that that's totally weird for me to. That would be my first thing I go look at from a Drake album is whether he wants to be in a relationship or not. That's that man Dennis. Again, can't force love on nobody. So let's get to the next one. No new friends. For years, Drake seemed to take pride in sharing the spotlight. With fresh face up and comers. But now that his popularity has become so unmovable, and perhaps because streaming only rewards name recognition anyway, he's largely given up scouting new talent. This made yesterday's uh, publicity stunt where he revealed uh, the records, guests via billboards, placed in their uh, hometowns. Oh, placed in their hometowns kind of un- uh, underwhelming. My bad, y'all. I had slow moments sometimes. That was one of them. Definitely one of them right there. Uh, so I saw the light. You know, the lights here. Was hitting you in the eyes. Bouncing all my glasses, y'all see it. And that reflection's extra in your ear. I'm just going to blame it on me being a little, you know, having a moment. But, uh, yeah. Hmm, I actually kind of like the promo. I thought it was different, unique. Nobody else I've really seen do that. They went to everybody's hometown to let them know, guess what? They on the album. And if in your hometown, you kind of run your hometown, people going to be, you know, more inclined to at least go see what that person said. If I'm not even a Drake fan, which is, you know, it's going to be hard to find somebody who's not really a Drake fan or nobody who's out here hearing Drake music because he's just that big. You can't escape Drake. The, the atmosphere... Around Drake is just humongous. So I don't know if I'm pretty sure there's people out there who don't, but it's hard to escape Drake. And I mean, he had Young Thug on it. Love me some Young Thug. He had Future on it. Love me some Future. Twenty One Savage. Love me some Twenty One Savage. Uh, Dirt. I really became a huge Dirk fan. Probably late. I was late to the party. Shout out to my girl. She put me on. I was definitely late to the Drake, uh, the Dirk party. Dirk, extremely talented, extremely talented, and then not, and that's not to say I was not listening to Dirk early on. I just kind of moved on as you know time progressed, and he was still dropping some really great music. So that's my fault for missing out on that. Little baby, he's been out here killing. Like I mean, he's been out here killing. He's a sniper right now. And, I mean, he has Travis Scott. They've done plenty of music together. Jay-Z, Ross, Wayne. I'm not mad at the features. I'm definitely not mad. He has some of my favorite people up here. So, I'm not mad at the features. Of course, somebody might have wanted some some younger people on there. Uh, 
but guess what? They just ain't make the cut. It's uh artistically you get to decide who makes the cut and who doesn't make the cut, and I guess they just didn't make the cut. Again, I'm gonna be a Drake Avenger. So I mean, this is my first time reading this article. I, I had no biases or anything like that coming in here. I was just taken aback from that first paragraph. Like, he doesn't want love. I've never heard another man say that to another man. But that's that <laughs> I guess that's a you know, I don't know. I says the Drake beat selection blueprint. Drake definitely chose uh a lot of, lot of more artistically type beats. I haven't finished the whole album. Trust me. I was supposed to uh, stay up, listen to it last night, but I was knocked out. I'm talking about snoring. I woke up early this morning, and I was like, hey, I'm going to go ahead and start the show at like 4 o'clock this morning. But guess what I did? Didn't make it to doing that, so I'm here now. But... I've definitely listened to uh, the majority of the album so far. And, again, I enjoy it. He's rapping, rapping. Uh, IG caption contenders. Uh, they say these are probably going to be... You know when Drake drops, people take his lyrics and turn them into IG captions. It just happens. He's that iconic. He's one of those guys. He's one of those goats. Because rap actually has um, they, You have to put them In different levels when it comes to goatisms. You have to go by generation almost Because if you don't go generationally You're naturally going to uh, Miss out on so many people Who are pioneer rap Those founding fathers Are important to the blueprint To what we have today So that's why I would say you would have to do it by generation because uh, rap switches generations about like every four to five years. Sometimes even faster than that, it's just like a, it just switches. So for somebody to have longevity throughout multiple generations of types of music, then, you know, you got to give them their flowers. You definitely have to give them his flowers. Of course, uh, let's read some of these. Cashman Knits for the Nighttime Boat Rides. I can see somebody saying that, you know, we have a lot of fun on boats. We do do that. So I can definitely see some of them captions flying off. This one's mine's right here. I've been losing friends and finding peace. Honestly, that sounds like a fair trade to me. Boss, boss. I enjoyed that line, but it, it definitely reminded me of one of my friend's songs who actually came out, you know, about like two months ago. And I know Drake been in Memphis. I'm not saying he stole, but it definitely sounds close to my friend's song because that thing crank. You know what I'm saying? That thing cranks. Uh, matter of fact, while I'm saying that, y'all go look it up. Uh, cool ass Tino, Ben. Fire. That came out about like two months ago. Fire. I had to let him know as soon as it dropped. Fire, 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 fire. I ain't saying Drake took anything, but the concepts are really similar. But that bar is fire, you know what I'm saying? I've been losing friends and finding peace. It happens like that sometimes because you figure out some people will anchor you down. Don't let anybody anchor your peace. No matter who they are, friends, family, girlfriend, boyfriend, anybody in between, do not. Let anybody anchor your peace. Because guess what? Loving yourself is the most important thing. And when you love yourself, it's easier for you to love other people. But you have to love yourself first. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Man, fucker, respectfully, I just want my respect. Pew, pew. Those shots for Justin LaBoy. Respectfully. Stay on your side of the fence. Boy, don't jump out there with Drake. Don't do that. You know, you chose sides. You chose the wrong side in this case. Because guess what? We're going to be certified lover boys the rest of this year. You know what I'm saying? I'm Canadian for a day. And I'm riding with my man Drake. Pew, pew. Shots fire. Don't play with that boy. He out here. Uh, Said you belong to the streets. But the streets belong to me. It's like home to me. That's that single life right there. You know what I'm saying? 
She been kicked back to the streets, but guess what? The streets is where I occupy. So I will see her. I'm going to see her, you know. She going to come around when she outside to play. We, we got the game of tag on, on, and guess what? You're it. That's what he telling her. You're it. It's your turn. <laughs> it is your turn. I, I like that one, man. You know what I'm saying? Picture me caring what a nigga saying on Wi-Fi they don't pay for. Those for the people who still living with their moms, not paying no bills. Still, you know, bottom of the basement, not paying no bills. That's for them. There's definitely some broke ass people with too much time on their hands. And they will troll. They will talk shit. Like, if you got time for, to go get some money, you got time to go get some money. You don't have time for the trolling and all that. So I feel them with that. Loyalty is priceless, and it's all I need. I feel that. I definitely feel that. Uh, and it says Drake's grown-up problems. Let's see what that is. Uh, I mean, around the time last year, Tusi Slab, Drake's shamelessly lazy version of a viral TikTok hit. I don't get why everybody saying this was a, a, a shamelessly lazy version of a viral TikTok hit. First of all, 2C Slot was a hit. It, it, it did what it was supposed to do. It definitely did what it was supposed to do. It got everywhere. Uh, for people to say it's lazy, to call somebody art lazy is a subjective statement. What you may perceive as lazy... You don't realize it takes a genius to continuously write hits or get hits out. It's a skill to craft songs that the masses want to consume. It is a skill. That's why usually the best rappers aren't the best lyricists. They're not. The songs you hear on rotation in the radio aren't the most lyrical songs. They're made to feed the masses. The masses. It's a skill to get a majority of people to agree this is an enjoyable thing. As we see with uh, a lot of different things. Like, not everybody's going to agree. But when you do get somebody to come to that consensus, you're in a winning position. And that's why I feel Drake is. I mean, I don't even want to finish this article. It's just been a little ad. Underwhelming pitchfork. Underwhelming. Uh Alphonse. It's been underwhelming. Alphonse Pierre. I wanna know if that is real name. Alphonse Pierre. Where are you from, my guy? <laughs> Talking about Drake's love life. That amazes me right there. You know what I'm saying? How do you so wake up and say, hey? going to write about whether Drake's in love or not. That is what I'm feeling today. <laughs> I would pass on that one. I, I ain't touching that one, man. You know what I'm saying? I would pass on writing that one if my first subject in the uh, article is does Drake want to find love? Does he want to be single forever? Like, did your girl give you that one or who gave you that one or say, hey, that's it? That is it. No, it's not. Try it again. Thank you. Like, man. <laughs> that what I got a right to be on Pitchfork? Is that what I got a right to get featured on Pitchfork? Talk about other males' love lives in that way? Should he be looking for love? He's 35 now. He's becoming an older man. It's time for him to start his family. Okay. You know, <laughs> don't write that when you got a Drake Avenger around because I'm going to smack that shit down every chance I get. You hear me? I'm riding with my boy. I am riding with my guy. Period. As the city girls will say, period. <laughs> I'm just saying, y'all, man. Drake Avenger, I'm here, baby. I am here. So... I'm really excited about this story right here. This story is one of those stories that put me in big kid mode, gets me excited. Because guess what? They announced the next verses. 
And guess who it is? Guess who it is? The one and only Ja Rule. It's the Rule, baby. And guess what? They got Fat Joe. This going to be a hell of a battle. Because when I say hits on hits on hits on hits on both sides, Fat Joe, in my opinion, has one of the most underrated careers overall wise. He's been around. I think he dropped his first song when I was like a baby. Like when I was like one or something like that. Fat Joe has been around forever. And he always comes back. Every about two years with a hit. And just come back with a little, little regular record. He come back with something that's on radio rotation. And John Rubin, he had his run. Nobody could have predicted 50 Cent. I'm just going to say that John Rubin was on top of the world. He was on top of the world. Nobody could predict 50 Cent and everything playing out the way it did. Nobody could have predicted, I mean, we, caught, we probably could have predicted, you know, the feds trying to mess with their business, you know. Because everybody who tried to come together and unite at that one time all had issues dealing with the government, federal agents, or, you know, a lot of different stuff. That's for you guys to go really look that up. Like Rapid Lab, Murder, Inc., uh, Death Row, and I forgot what was the last label. They were all coming together to do a distribution deal, and then the feds came. We're just going to put it as that. Uh, go check out J Prince book. He talks about how they they had a hit on them, basically trying to kill him. Crazy, but yeah. So we're right here in Revolt, and it says Fat Joe and Ja Rule are the next MCs to go head to head for verses. The battle is set to go down in New York City on Tuesday, September the 14th at 9 p.m. That's right around the corner, man. We are officially 11 days away from that. 11 days away from that. That's going to be lit. And you know what's great about that? They smart. They're going to do it the day after, like, Monday Night Football. Because football's back. So don't even anybody trying to compete with football. You'll be a fool. Don't do it. People love their football. And it's back. People are going to uh, consume their football. They dominate TV ratings and things and people's attention. So, don't pick a Tuesday. That's like a great marketing thing right there. You know? Uh, so, the article goes on to say both artists have major hits under their belts. Ja Rule and Murder, Inc. had the game in a chokehold in the late 90s, early 2000s. He's not lying. Domination. Domination. Uh, said so they had tracks like uh, Put It On Me, Always On Time, Living It Up, Between Me And You, Mesmerize, Holla, holla, down ass bitch. But Joey Crack definitely has a lot of hits as well. Lean back all the way up, another round. So excited. What's love? Uh, this battle to me is going to be determined by who can uh, dictate the way the records come out. Because both of them have hits. Both of them have women's songs. Both of them have street songs. Both of them have club bangers. Both of them got hits. And I probably expect them to do like uh, New York at the end of the show. Since Fat Joe's on that song. I probably expect them to do that. Uh, the Ja Rule battle, most people actually wanted was 50 and Ja Rule. I did not think that was going to happen. Uh, it even says that in the, uh, uh, this article right here. Initially, Ja wanted to go up against uh, Arch Nemesis, 50 Cent, in the versus battle. Uh, he told Fat Joe last year he wanted all the smoke and that he'll behave. But that's tough. I like uh, the way Gucci Man and Jeezy went down, I don't see either one of them having the restraint of Jeezy. Uh, Jeezy, in that case, you know, R.P. Pookie Loke, he ain't my guy. That was Jeezy's guy who was sent on the mission to end up dying. In this case, you had 50 Cent, who his life was on the line. I don't think I could ever forgive somebody who was involved in me almost losing my life. 
So I, I definitely don't see how that situation would have played out. But I'm definitely interested with this versus about it because how can I be? Fat Joe has hits. Ja Rule has hits. Uh, again, I'm just going to be interested to see how they play this. Because it's going to come down to how the records come out, in my opinion. is uh, That's going to be the determining factor to who wins uh, in that situation. Uh, so, it's time for some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? We got to get into it. Uh, this story was a little crazy, you know. Definitely a little crazy. So, uh, Summer Walker in London on the track. They've been going back and forth for Instagram. Uh, just been a nasty breakup to their relationship. Nasty, nasty, nasty. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it sucks to be in those, uh, to be in a relationship and not uh, end it gracefully. I know not all relationships end that way. Most relationships end bad. But you hope when you have kids that some of this will just try to work its way out. But it always seems to make things worse. So, Summer Walker took to Instagram and wrote that her ex had blocked her. Uh, Since the saga began... The saga between Summer Walker and London on the track continuing a recent Instagram post. The singer slammed the ex, calling him a ghetto baby daddy from hell. The thing that's so funny about this situation is it kind of relates to the man that's feeling away. Uh, when it says some women just want Pookie and Ray Rays. No offense to London, I don't know you. I do not know you. Uh, so I don't know if you're a ghetto baby daddy or not. I don't know. I just know the shit that gets out into the public. But what I learned from this situation was when Summer Walking Hill was dating, she had to deal with all the baby mama drama from not one, but two different baby mamas. Then she proceeds. To still let him get her pregnant. And now she says she's dealing with the shit the other baby mamas had to deal with. Because she felt she was so special. You're not. No offense, Summer Walker. You make beautiful music. Beautiful music. I'd be lying if I said you didn't. You make really great music. But guess what? Stop trying to change people. I had a whole show about that. You cannot change people. They have to grow into who they're going to be. They have to become who they're going to be. You cannot force them to do anything different. You set yourself up for failure believing somebody will be special for you. Learn to like people for who they are. Learn to love people for who they are. Learn to... uh. Understand, people are who they're going to be. I can't expect you to change. You have to want to change yourself. I mean, I don't even want to get into those. It, it just not. This is another case of stop trying to change people. Because now you make yourself look even Stupider because now you used to argue with the old baby mamas. Now you're the, the baby mama calling him the ghetto ass baby daddy, and now the other baby mamas come on saying, You're crazy, you're crazy. And then you got to come out in defense and say, I'm not crazy. Remember when the shoe was on the other foot? No, I let him have you. And now I give him back to you, and now I'm the crazy one. Y'all all look stupid, really. Your kids is going to come back and say, Hey. My parents participated in the circus. That's all I'm saying. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm looking at it the wrong way. But I don't think I'm looking at it the wrong way. I think I'm seeing the ghetto in it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Whew, so this 
Uh, this story was like, damn, not again, not again. Hey, y'all young dudes love shooting, love busting in the wrong pussy, bruh. So, there's been rumors going around that uh, LaMelo Ball, who plays for the Charlotte Hornets, is now the uh, the father of IG model Anna Montana's unborn child. So, it's some pre-context. Uh, hey, Mike. Mike Jordan, the guy I love to defend as the goat of basketball, the basketball god, Michael Jordan. If you don't teach these young niggas how to wrap up their dicks, you're failing. You're failing the community right now. If you don't teach them how to wrap it up. It's a song out there called 3-6 Mafia, Don't Be Scared. And as a kid, it taught me not to be Jimmy. Because he got a bad case of the drip drop for not wrapping it up. Now, Melo don't have a drip drop, but it looks like he drip dropped in some, uh, he drip dropped in something, and now he has a bun in the oven. Uh, so right here, the article says, on the court, LaMelo Ball has swiftly become the face of the Charlotte Hornets. Off the court, the youngest Ball brother has been spotted getting cozy with a handful of different women. Yes, he has. He's been out here living his best NBA life. Openly living his best NBA life. Uh, it also says the 20-year-old Hornet star has most recently been linked to 32-year-old Instagram model Anna Montana. Recently posted pictures on an IG story with the two together have many convinced they have been seeing each other. It says the latest rumor surrounding the Hornet star that has Twitter buzzing is that Anna Montana may actually be pregnant and LaMelo Ball excuse me and LaMelo Ball as a, uh, with LaMelo Ball being assumed as the father says Montana had a post and uh, posted and later deleted a tweet and Instagram story that implied she may be with child uh, inside one of the posts she said in love with a human that I haven't met yet uh, these are some of the messages right here where it says, uh, big adventures, start little, so thankful and so happy. Thank you, God. <sighs> so I just want to say, Mike, do something, bro. First PJ Washington, now LaMelo. Where the brother, where the ball brothers at, man? Where they at? What pops at? He got to be somewhere. Like, what's going on? Tell these dudes to wrap it up, bruh. No offense, but if he's out here, you know, fucking around, wrap it up, bruh. Don't become the lick. Do not become the lick. I thought I was going to name this podcast Canadian for a day. But I'm going to name this shit Don't Become the Lick. I just want to say It's bad It is bad Teammates falling for the same trap In the roof With the goat running the team And he couldn't warn y'all about none of these things He couldn't tell y'all Look at Scotty Don't date nobody who's going to have you looking out here like Scotty Pippen My Batman I don't have nobody out here that's going to have you looking like that. Looking like a fool in public. Y'all have too much money not to buy condoms. Y'all have too much money to put yourselves in these situations. Now, could you be in love with the person? You could be. And if you are in love with the person, I wish y'all the best of luck. From the outside looking in, looked like she was a plaything. No offense. I know I'm not here to objectify women at all. But we all understand there's a certain sector of women who this are out here. 
We call those the women who belong to the streets. And to the streets, she shall go back. But it doesn't seem that's the case. That doesn't seem to be the thing they want to do. They want to keep on frolicking with the women that are for everyone and get her pregnant. Don't do that. The women. There are a certain sect of women who put themselves in position to be for the streets. And like it or not, um, that's what they do. And I just can see me doing that. I, I can see me doing that. But that's me. You know what I'm saying? I don't have... Uh, He's going to get generational wealth. I'm not in position for that yet. I'm working my way to that in a different aspect of life. But I can see me like already putting myself in a hole with somebody I was just trying to have some fun with. Again, I don't know their relationship. I'm just from the outside looking in. He's been caught with a multitude of women, meaning he wasn't committing to one of them usually in those cases. Like you're openly being caught with all these women. Fellas. Look at me. Don't do it. Don't do it. That just sounds like a recipe for disaster. Uh, This next story. These people, please understand. I don't choose the stories. The stories choose me. And that's the case with Shakari Richardson again. Because... <sighs> I'm still trying to figure out who, what, when, where, and why. Nobody ain't take your phone yet, bro. Somebody should take your phone away. Uh. So, uh, as we know, there's been a lot of negativity pushed away because of a tweet she didn't like her. Her response to after coming in last, her quitting on the 200 meter race. Uh, my last video title for her was, is Shakari going out bad? Uh, to me, she did the right thing by just staying quiet. You know, I'm not telling you uh, people or anybody, they don't have to say anything. You have the right to say anything you want. In some cases in life, it's better to be quiet than to say the wrong thing. Especially when you're already in a, a hole. It's better to be quiet than dig the hole deeper. And I personally believe she may have dug her hole deeper because, uh, let me see if they got the message here. She chose violence. This meme here, I guess it was something from like Game of Thrones or something like that. But. The message she chose to put out there was violence on. Personally, I think you should uh should have put some context in there. You should have said, uh, you chose violence to the track. Cause you're gonna kill that. You killing every practice, so you chose violence for that. But no. You just openly and broadly stated it. You chose violence. How was that going to help you get out of last place? I'll wait because I know somewhere somebody's going to come up here and say, I'm being hard on women again. And again, I'm not. When people love you and know you're the bag, they should treat you as such. They should show you love and treat you as the bag. I'm pretty sure she's the bag. You do not let the bag fuck up. You don't let the bag take L's. You don't let the bag do that. It's your job as a recipient of somebody who has the bag to keep them uh, in line. Keep them in check in some ways. You can't tell somebody who's the boss, of course. You can't tell them what to do. But you can let them know your mind. Speak your mind. Don't be a yes man. Don't say yes, sis. Post that. Say, nah. Let's think about what. With everything going on, would this be the right message for us to push? And I, I guess you don't, maybe she don't have that person around her to say, nah, chill out on this one, don't do this one. 
Because I hate that I feel like I have to keep talking about Shakari and it's not about her doing anything positive. It's not her winning races. Uh, it's not her not qualifying for something. It's her and the negativity surrounding everything since her suspension. Like, she was literally the talk of the town. And then, again, I even stated after learning about track and field, her perception was better than reality because she never ran a faster time than these other women. And then when you get a chance to race against them, you give a piss poor performance. And then you go and give an interview, which was uh, heavily critical. Uh, I mean, cr heavily criticized uh, post-interview. And then you quit. And then you like tweets disparaging the people who just beat you in the race. It is not. I mean, I don't want to talk about those things. I want to talk about the happiness. I want to talk about you winning. I want to talk about your success. That's what I really want to talk about with Shikari Richardson. But it just seems I'm keep finding my play, myself in a place where I have to uh, say, please stop. Just sit down. Do something. Do something else. This is not it. This is not the way you're not helping yourself. I really wish somebody else would tell her that. I don't want to be the guy who has to tell you, no, this is not the way. This is not it. Again, man, uh, send praise to Shikari. First of all, please send praise to Shikari. Because uh, I don't want this to come off as like I'm hating. Again, I'm, I'm no offense to any of my other listeners if you're from other races or anything like that. I'm pro-black. I'm super pro-black. That doesn't mean I hate anybody. I just want to see all my black people win. All of them. Big, small, tall, short, everybody. If you're black, I want to see you winning. I want to see black people winning. Black people around the world, but uh, especially black Americans. We have a unique struggle within this country that we all have to deal with. I want to see all of us rise to the level that of uh, things that we can actually obtain. And we don't help do that by sugarcoating the line about certain shits. And this is one of those things, like, everybody grieves differently. Everybody does grieve differently. But that first time she decided she wanted to smoke, somebody who loved her should have said, do not fumble the bag. And then, uh, in between the races, she was, like, cocky before the Olympics. Like, oh, y'all miss me and all that. Shh. Just be quiet. We got commercials on TV. We got more commercials than wins. Let's not fumble the bag. And then you you come out. You're ready to run. You got commercials about you ready to go run. And then you go out there and you come in last place. Do not fumble the bag. Uh, your tweets don't help. Like you, you're becoming so polarizing. And... I don't want people to think I'm talking about you because of that. I want to talk about your success and your victories. Like, that's what I really want to talk. I want to see you win. I want to see you bounce back. Because if you bounce back and come back and beat all them and come in first, your story phew, through the roof. Like, that's extra movie deal. That's everything. I want to see you get to that level. I want to see you train, train, train until you come back and beat them. Because I want to hold you to the same level that I would hold LeBron. Like, I, people get mad at me because I say LeBron quit. They say, well, I would have quit, so I need to go win here, I need to go win there. But nah, sometimes you got to tough it out and just work harder. And when you do that, you see the success. Not every time it's easier to quit than go to the other side and think the grass is going to be greener. That's why we have the quote, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. And I mean, usually when some people go there, they find out there's some consequences to those decisions they made to try to take one route versus another. And we see how those things play out. Again, prayers to Shakara. Hopefully she gets somebody around her who says, do not fumble the bag. Like, you fucking up. Chill out, chill out, chill out. Give me your phone. You don't need your phone. Chill out. That's all they got to tell her. Chill out. Next time. We do this next time. And just like that, we back. Had to go take a quick bathroom break, you know. We drinking a lot of water, a lot of coffee. And that shit will run through you fast. No jokes. You know what I'm saying? It will run through you fast. Uh, this next story I thought was uh, pretty interesting. 
So there's this South African designer who has something called Daniel Rope Ties. You've been on the internet, you've seen this, and it looks crazy because I, apparently, I guess they've been doing some advertisements in America, and that's how I was able to see it. But these ties resemble nooses. Just look at them, just from this picture. It has a little rope at the end. So, I mean, the article go, blah, blah, blah. How did I say that? The article goes on to say, a fashion designer in South Africa is apologizing to those he offended by his assortment of rope ties that resemble nooses. In a now viral Facebook post, uh, designer Daniel Nogbini, hopefully I said that right, a uh, collection of rope ties was ripped apart by onlookers, confused and outraged by how much they look like nooses. Dubbed Daniel Rope Ties, the photo shows a black man, a black male model sporting the ties around his neck. Uh, we proud, we proud ourselves in bringing tomorrow's fashion today. The post reads, Daniel Rope Ties, styles and unique, style is unique, simple and fashionable. Oh, he also went on to throw in a 30% off code if you want to go buy it now. Uh, in America, I would say that is a no-no. And I also seen a post where he said, I mean, if nooses promote trauma, so does general murder, and we have guns and knives on t-shirts and things like that. That is trauma produced to everybody, though. This one specific thing within America really signified know what that is they're trying to hack me uh yeah that's really signified uh white supremacy in america it does it does it does uh white people used to go to the town square to watch a nigga hang that was their thing don't believe me we can go pull up some pictures i don't want to shock y'all or anything white people Go see town hanging. Ah, I thought they were going to bring up some photos. That's going to say imagery. Ah. <sighs> Come on, Google. Don't do that to me. First two links go bad. So... Public hangings. Look at that crowd. I see down there in them photos. Those are not black people pulling up to go see the public hangings. Or this photo here of the white people proud, smiling in the background. Uh, Shorty right there in the little polka dot dress. Her goofy looking ass. I know she got some goofy looking ass grandkids, but she's a goofy looking motherfucker. But you see them right here. They just all pull up. They point at the black people hanging in the crowd. This is American history. See the crowd of white men around the one black guy being hung? This is American history. This is America. This is some of y'all grandparents. This is some of y'all grandparents. Some of y'all great-grandparents. Probably a lot of y'all great-grandparents. A little less so, y'all grandparents. A little, little less so, your parents. But racism is prevalent in America. And that, I mean, a noose tie and noose anything. No, it's a no. It's a negative. It ain't going to fly. As a black man, I would never be caught with a noose around my neck trying to say it's fashion now. I'm not that pressed to be fashionable. That's me. Uh, and probably a large contingent of people that I know. If you pulled up with me with a, a, a noose around your neck talking about it's high fashion, boy, I'm going to smack you. I'm a I'm a I'm a smack you one time for the ancestors. You know what I'm saying? Like, do not denigrate yourself in such a fashion. Do not do that to yourself. I would never be caught in that. I wish him and his business the best of luck, but they just won't be getting business from me. Because come on, man. He tried to compare it to guns and knives. Like guns and knives have been used to harm everybody. The general masses. But to do it with. Uh, do it straight up. Just you know. 
let's make this a positive thing. I'm going to say nah to that one. I know people love making negatives positives. For instance, you've heard me say the word nigga. That's something that we kind of converted. But guess what? There's no, I, I don't know who made that. I guess, you know, after a while, everybody just started using the terminology and it just didn't leave. But we're not in 2021 trying to make nooses cool. That that is not the uh the move at all. Uh so I have a special video clip I wanna get to. I feel it's important for everybody, especially my audience, to hear these things. Uh I hope they don't try to copyright strike me for this or whatever, you know, hit me with a strike for having this conversation presented. But, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to a special person. Her name is Dr. Christina Parks, and she went to go give testimony uh, at the Michigan State House about the corona mandates. And she's knowledgeable about what she speaks on, so let's get into what she's saying. Hello, my name is Dr. Christina Parks. I received my PhD in cellular and molecular biology right here in the state of Michigan from University of Michigan Medical School. And um, so I'm very well versed in the science of both these mRNA gene therapy vaccines, this kind of technology, as well as what a vaccine is designed to do in the body, what it can do, what it can't do, and the fact that this is extremely complex science that has been oversimplified in the media to basically take away our freedom of choice. What I want to address today in this limited time is the fact that vaccine requirements and mandates are based on the faulty assumption that the vaccines in question prevent transmission of the pathogen, right? Does the vaccine for DTaP prevent transmission? No. Does the vaccine for flu prevent transmission? No. Does, do the vaccines for COVID prevent transmission? No. Uh, so she's getting to this point here in which she's saying uh, the vaccine that we have now does not stop transmission, which was the initial thing that was sold for people to take vaccines. It was supposed to stop you from getting it and stop the transmission from you. Those were the initial things there early on in the vaccines. Then the goalposts got moved. I, I, I'm pretty sure I've said that before. Goalposts have been moving so much from the CDC to Fauci to ma uh, mainstream media. They continuously move the goalposts. So let, let's get back into here and finish here with this. Uh, what she has to say. In fact, they were never designed to do that. All right, so you're asking, what about this 95% effectiveness? If you look at those clinical trials, they do not say that they prevent transmission. They expressly say that they're measuring whether they um, attenuate symptoms. So they're 95% effective based on their clinical trials at attenuating symptoms for the first variant, which is essentially gone in our population. Right now, the predominant variant is the Delta, and um, CDC Director Walensky basic, basically said that these vaccines have no ability to prevent infection by and transmission of the Delta variant. So our policy needs not to be built on the hope of what we think something we want it to do, but what the data actually tell us. So do these viruses prevent, the, I mean, do the vaccines prevent the virus from infecting and uh, replicating in the nose and nasopharynx? No, they've only been shown to prevent that replication in the lungs. They're different, the mucosa is very different than the lungs, it's very different than the blood. You inject it to the blood, you make antibodies in your blood. The virus isn't infecting your blood, it's infecting your mucosa and you don't produce any IgA to neutralize it. In fact, recent studies have shown that the vaccinated, especially with the Delta variant, and the unvaccinated have similar amounts of virus in their nose and throat. In Barnstable, Massachusetts... Uh, I'm a quick break, quick break, quick intermission, you know, fair use. I got a quick break it one, every once in a while. Uh, so probably in layman's terms, you know, I'm not a virologist, so I don't pretend to be one. Uh, only on YouTube, I pretend to be one. <laughs> That's a joke. But... Uh, She's trying to say that uh, the vaccine is meant 
to hit your blood screen they do protections through that way but that has no way to affect your mucosa i guess that's the mucus you know smart person smart way of saying mucus that's scientist jargon for us so she's saying the vaccine is building up protections in different parts of the body that does not affect to where it's actually going to attack your body interesting so let's get back into the uh video the cdc tracked an outbreak of 469 cases of covid 74 percent occurred in fully vaccinated and four out of five of those hospitalized were vaccinated that's a high number that's a high number i'm uh we keep being told that uh this second wave of the pandemic is a pandemic of the unvaccinated, but based on her numbers, that is a falsehood. And we're going to continue on from that. So maybe they are mandating this because they just didn't know with the COVID. And so my main complaint is with our health agencies and the CDC who basically know better and are misleading the public. So let's look at DTaP, which the scientists and the CDC have known since 2014 that the acellular pertussis vaccine does not prevent people from getting infected with the pertussis bacteria and passing it to others. In fact, it was never designed to do that. The vaccine was designed to neutralize the pertussis toxin. Pertussis, we know it as whooping cough. It can be fatal for children under six months. So neutralizing this toxin saves lives, all right? I'm not gonna debate that. But what it doesn't do is neutralize the bacteria. So what happens is fully vaccinated children go to daycare, they pick up that bacteria, and they come home and they give it to their newborn brother or sister. They get deathly ill and they go to the hospital. Hopefully our medical professionals are able to save them. But who do they blame? Now the CDC is blaming anti-vaxxers for the limitations of this vaccine design. I suggest that they be transparent and tell parents that although it is preventing severe disease in their children, it is not preventing transmission because we have created a whole class of asymptomatic pertussis carriers who are increasing the disease. Now, the old DTP vaccine that many of you who are my age or older got did prevent transmission. When we switched to the safer a cellular virgin, they knew that it was never designed to pre prevent transmission. It was safer, it had less adverse events, but pertussis um, cases have gone through the roof. There's a resurgence in pertussis because of the design of the vaccine, and the vaccinologists know this, they're trying to address it, and so we cannot mandate that something that does not prevent transmission. All right, what about the flu vaccine? Well, they have shown that basically it, there's no difference, there's no statistical difference if you're vaccinated or unvaccinated, whether you get the flu or not. But it's even worse because although that first year, it is somewhat effective, it's about 65% effective at preventing um, symptoms in you, after that, it actually has negative efficacy. And I want to address this because it's very important. Vaccines are made to a specific variant, and when that variant mutates, the vaccine no longer recognizes it. And so it's like you're seeing a completely new virus, and be because that's so, you actually get more severe symptoms when you're vaccinated against one variant, and then it mutates, and then your body sees the other variant. So there's the potential, and the science shows that in fact with the flu, if you get uh, vaccinated in multiple years, you are more likely to get severe disease, you are more likely to have more viral replication, and you are more likely to be hospitalized, both in adults and in children. We are seeing the same thing in COVID with the Delta variant. And so we are mandating that people get a vaccine that could actually make them more sick when they're um, exposed to the virus. In fact, this week, a paper came out, and what it showed is that with this Delta variant, when you're vaccinated, your body makes antibodies that are supposed to neutralize the virus, but they were supposed to neutralize the old variant. When they see this new variant, what they're doing is they're actually, the antibodies are taking the virus and helping it infect the cells. Uh, so I gotta stop that. That's a big part right there. So they have new medical studies that have come out to say that if you have the vaccine, but you're exposed to Delta, you're more prone to get in worse versions of that Delta variant because of the way that the vaccine tried to build up protections for something else. So 
why is this on TV every night? Big pharmaceutical companies. Again, the FDA has approved things that have made people sick before, i.e. talcum-based uh, uh, powders that Johnson & Johnson produced and they knew for years it gave people cancers. They're still fighting those cases right now. Uh, with Fauci, A-T-Z, look it up. Please go look it up. You probably need DuckDuckGo so you can get the best information when you want to look up stuff like this because Google is a part of the people who, you know, manipulate information. I won't say hi. They manipulate. They definitely manipulate information. Uh, but it's crazy that they know that uh, based on science, because we're supposed to make decisions of this magnitude based on science, that we're creating class of people who will be... Uh, who could have natural immunity. There's a 99% success rate of surviving this thing. A lot of people are going to have natural immunity. So why would you mandate a vaccine and decide to make people either leave their jobs, quit their jobs, not be able to go to bars? It makes no sense for our economy for you to push something of that sort. And now you're requiring, uh, they're saying booster shots. We're going to need booster shots every six months? Why did I get a vaccine in the first place? I will continue. All right, that science was just published this week. We need to be looking at the science and we need our policy to reflect the science and we also need it to reflect our rights. Okay. And so, um, as a PhD who knows the science, I'm in the category of the most vaccine hesitant group. Yes, PhDs are the most vaccine hesitant. Y'all hear that? PhDs who usually be some of the smartest people around us. They're the most educated people, at least by terms of book wise, meaning the smartest about educational, uh, by educated class of people in America are the least likely to take this vaccine. I wonder why. Followed by people who have less than a high school degree because they know what they don't know and they don't trust their government. And many people, the other group that is very vaccine hesitant are African Americans. 70% of African Americans have not taken this vaccine. Why? Because they don't trust their government. Do they have reason not to trust their government? Well, between the um, years of 1930 and 1970, the CDC conducted the Tuskegee experiment where they took un, um, untreated males with syphilis and they refused to treat them. Even after antibiotics became available, they still did not treat them and they did not tell them that they had syphilis. They told those people that they were there to secure their health and they did not secure their health, they abused them. You say, well, that was in the past, although I don't think 1970 was that long ago. 1970 is not that long ago. My mother was born and they were still doing this experiment from our government to our people. Just want to state that. My mother was alive during this. Well, in 2012, whistleblower William Thompson came forward and said, we published a study that said MMR does not cause autism, but we lied. And the CDC tried to keep him from testifying in court. Go look it up. In fact, we shredded data that showed that when black boys are vaccinated on time, they have increased rates of autism diagnosis. And we shredded it and we left it out of the paper. As an African American and a PhD, I want to ask each of you, are we going to exclude 70% of African American people from the workforce and from education? There's probably a good segment of people who say, right on, you know what I'm saying? But that goes to show if 70% of African Americans at the time of her giving these, uh, these numbers out, they don't have the vaccine, that's millions. That's millions. That's over 6 million people, people. We're going to tell 6 million people they excluded from life. That's what, that's what I'm trying to figure out. That's over 6 million people here in this country. You're just going to tell them, no, you can't, uh, you can't do that. Well, no. Wow. My math is terrible right now. Yeah. My math is terrible. 
That's over 18 million people. Probably around like 22. I'm doing everything off the top of my head. And I don't know why I started from 100 million when we have over 350 million people. So we, we have to triple that number. So I'm saying with about 25 million people, you're going to tell them no. You can't go to bars. You can't go to movies. You can't go to work. You can't fly. You can't take trips. You can't do anything like that. Because we don't trust you because you've poisoned us before. And then when you have whistleblowers, you try to stop the whistleblowers from whistleblowing, i.e. Barack Obama, because this guy came out under Barack Obama, a black man. But guess what? He would put policies forth that doesn't always protect black people. Black people have to stop looking at Obama as just their guy and look at him as one of those guys who had a position of power and did nothing for us, truly. Because if you have a whistleblower coming out like this and you can control who is ahead of the CDC, then you could, you know, make sure that it gets out that the uh, that government scientists are lying to the people. They have been. They're not stopping. Let's continue. My ancestors did not work this hard. I come up from a family that worked very hard and I'm very aware that my privileges are dependent on the work of my grandmother and my great-grandmother, and I have great respect for these people that put me where I am, and yet you're telling me that my son will not be able to be educated if, based on the history of African Americans in this country, that he doesn't want to be vaccinated? All right, so I will leave you with that question. Who are we going to exclude from the workforce? Are we going to continue with discrimination and segregation in the United States of America? Thank you. Bars. Bars. Seriously. Seriously. Why would you want to do that? Why? Why? Why would you want to exclude us? We're great people. We do amazing things. We're great people. And we do amazing things. And because we don't trust the government who's been poisoning us before. I mean, just look at America in general. Uh, while the Flint crisis was going on, we had over 1,300 cities in America who didn't have clean drinking water. Why is that acceptable for America? Like, I love America enough that even if, you know, you're not a black person, I want all Americans to live the best life ever. Like, we're here now. How we got here, that's a whole different uh, discussion. Uh, what happened when other people came to the land and how everything played out there, that's a whole different discussion. I would, would I tell somebody to be proud of the legacy of they, uh, their grandparents and their grandparents and ancestors helped kill off millions and millions of people? No. I mean, But we are here now, and from what we have here now and what we can build on from now, I would love my country. And, I mean... We can't just keep doing things that's going to uh, hurt people based on things of uh, racial lines, like vaccine mandates. It's going to become, like she said, another way to segregate uh, the general masses of the public. And it's been done through vaccines. Uh, when we're supposed to believe science, we tend to see people on the left. It can choose which science we want to believe, when we want to believe it, and why we would believe it. That's why I'm no longer in the Democrat Party. Again, I'm not telling y'all what y'all to vote for. I'm not telling y'all what to vote for. I'm not a Republican either. I'm an independent voter. I look at policies. Based on policies, I make decisions on what would be best for me. What I believe who would put policies... Uh, for that'd be best for not only me but my business, my family, uh, cause that's the only thing I can really worry about. I can't worry about trying to please everybody when it comes to things like that. But I can't keep uh standing with people who are gonna openly lie, openly lie, openly. Like they will pee on you and tell you it's raining, and you're just supposed to accept it because hey, we're the Democrats. <laughs> We're the good guys. Psych. Y'all want to go bomb another country or something? 
<laughs> I said I want to go to go bomb another country or something. I'm just saying, like, whoo. So uh, there's another interesting story out there floating around. China is planning on doing to, uh banning the amount of online gaming that's uh exposed to minors. So let's get into this story right here. Three hours a week. That's the absolute maximum amount of time under 18s can spend on video games in China, after the country introduced a drastic new limit to combat gaming addiction. China is the world's largest video game market, and authorities here have worried for years about gaming and internet addiction among young people. The National Press and Publication Administration, the regulator that approves video game titles, said the new rules were a response to growing concern that games affected the physical and mental health of children. According to state media, about 62.5% of Chinese minors often play games online. Rising rates of nearsightedness were cited as a concern in 2018. Clinics have even been set up which combine therapy and military drills for those with so-called gaming disorders. Chinese regulators have also targeted the private tutoring industry and what they see as celebrity worship in recent weeks, citing the need to ensure the well-being of children. Gaming limits aren't a completely foreign concept in China. All right, well, I want to stop and give you know some takes on it from right here. I kind of understand where the government of China is coming from in that instance. Uh, yes, you can make money playing video games. The majority of people who play video games will not make a dollar from them playing video games. It is a, uh, It should be an outlet to release yourself after doing other things, but some people just will play video games all day. Uh, that comes into the facet of if you have time... On your hands to hate on somebody, then you have time to figure out how to go get some more money. I'm pretty sure you need it. Most of the people on the internet, if you out here hating on somebody, you got time to go get some money. You just spending your time the wrong way. I play video games. I definitely play video games. The thing they're saying is they don't want them playing online. They're trying to curb them playing online, I guess, against other people because I guess online gaming increases the amount of addiction because you got your friends and all of that there. So it becomes almost like a community type thing but i kind of get what they're saying you know when you're young you're still developing you probably should focus on other things as such uh that, that's probably a little complicated i probably would put more of the uh emphasis on the parents in that because you know some parents will just let their kids uh they let the video games and uh, and youtube raise their kids that's a huge portion of the generation they allow youtube and video games to raise their kids. China's trying to curb that. I can kind of see that. But it says only for online gaming. So if you're playing like a solo campaign, you should still be Gucci. You can play as much as you want, I guess, inside your house. They just don't want you on the internet with it. Uh, so we're going to finish this video. In 2017, Tencent Holdings said it would limit playtime for some young users of its flagship mobile game, Honor of Kings, after complaints from parents and teachers that children were becoming addicted. In 2019, Beijing passed. Mo well, in America, if they have a video game and they say they it's addictive, they gonna run so many commercials to get more kids playing it, man. They say capitalism above all. If they addicted and it ain't gonna make them do shit else. Hey, that's their fault. Capitalism, yeah. Awesome. I love capitalism, y'all. Just need regulations. Definitely needs regulations, but I believe in every you know, after you get that equal playing field, everybody for themselves, you either sink or swim, sink or swim. Limiting minors to less than 1.5 hours of online games on weekdays and three hours on weekends, as well as rules on how much minors could spend on virtual gaming items. 
In July, Tencent rolled out a facial recognition function dubbed Midnight Patrol that parents can switch on to prevent children from using adult logins to get around the government curfew. 漏洞一直在的，嗯，比方说像这个政策的话，我们现在都可以想象得到的，呃，其实国家已经开始在准备对付的，比方说账户的租赁，就成年人把账户租给年轻人，或者嗯、呃、改装手机，呃或者。哎、hey, ，That's crazy. Uh, I think we had a convers. I had, a little while back we had a conversation on how you can know you can just go get like a uh. Uh, one of the old heads outside the liquor store to go get something, you know, some liquor for you when you want the age and stuff. That's what they're gonna be doing now with the games. You're gonna go find your bum, say, "Hey, let me pay you for your your phone information and shit like that, so I can get the games going the way I want them to." That's that's what it sounds like they're gonna create that type of class system there. 出甚至将来会有人皮面具啊，都有可能。当然，实际上我们看到的最多的可能呢是本身就是家长愿意。呃，在呃家长许可的条件下，帮助家里面的小孩给他解锁这一类的，所以呢，这个政策肯定不是百分之百的一刀切的，真的砍死了呃所有年轻人玩游戏在平常玩游戏的这种可能性，但大体上讲是做得到的。Well, the onus sits with the gaming industry rather than individuals. Online gaming companies must ensure they have put real name verification systems in place. And all titles will eventually need to be connected to an anti-addiction system being set up by the NPPA. The NPPA told state news agency Xinhua it would increase the frequency and intensity of inspections to ensure limits were put in place, step up measures to punish gaming firms that violate the rules, and increase penalties given after inspections. Ah,、uh, so yeah. Do I a hundred percent agree? I kind of go into the parenting choice, but as a government, you will want your people to be the best people, and if you can get your people to focus on something else other than video games, kind of winning. You kind of winning. It sucks that you have to ban、uh, the excess, but I mean they technically still have excess, just in different ways, much different ways. Uh, you know that. Chinese culture is just so much different than American culture because the gov the way the government has control of its people. And I mean, yeah, definitely crazy. Would I want to have to deal with that? I think not. But yeah. Ah,、uh, so. There's a viral video of Suki Hana. Her her new music video. I、uh, can't show the whole video here on YouTube because guess what? They would definitely take my channel down, take the video down. But let's discuss the Suki Hana video. Somebody right here has uh. Has something on here says Suki Hana breaks the internet. Let's see her quick breakdown of it. You know, I wish I could show y'all the video. Wish I could link it the video down low. They might still hit me for that. But y'all should go find that video because it is an interesting video. If you ever seen Tip Drill for people my age and above, it's similar to Tip Drill. And it, and YouTube don't have YouTube on top. What's up, y'all? It's me, it's Mel with the Lip in the Gap and. Why that gotta be her meme? Oh, I mean her little gift, like, <laughs> who the ratchetness? Out! Oh my god, um, I, I I don't know what to say about what I just watched, Sukiana. Uh, if you don't know who she is, I will drop the link down in the description box to her Twitter because I cannot play the video here. But I will tell y'all this: you, you, you better get ready, okay? If you are a good Christian, church-going woman or man, do not click on the link because I don't know. Hell, look, Christians, church women, church men, they are the freakiest. You hear me? Don't let the stop with believing that church means you're not a freak. The deacon out there busting them things down. The pastor out there busting them things down. You hear me? Stop believing sin ain't happening within the church. Cause, cause, guess what? Nobody can stop from sinning. 
The thought of a sin is the same as the action of a sin. And your brain works in weird ways. So we sin every single day. Everybody sins every single day. So the, that's nonsense to, to say that if you're a church you're going folk not to watch it. Guess what? Ah, doing some of the freaky, freaky too. The extra freaky. Trust me. <laughs> the church folks, yeah, let them fool you if they want. They ain't fooling me. That video, it's worse than tr tip drill. Yep. Yeah, remember I said tip drill? I haven't seen this video yet. I haven't seen her video, but I've seen Suki video. And that's what a lot of comparisons it reminded me of. Tip drill. For those who, again, remember BT Uncut at Night. Tip Drill was one of them videos, you hear me? Yes, one of them videos. I might have to go watch Tip Drill after I'm done with this show. Remember Nelly, Tip Drill? Honey, listen, oh my God, Suki. Suki, Suki really trying to break the internet. She, you know what, every time- She ain't try. She definitely uh, accomplished that because I don't pay attention to Suki. It has to be something of really big focus for Suki and Hana to make it to my atmosphere because I'm worried about other things. But that video definitely made it to my atmosphere yesterday. It definitely made it to my atmosphere yesterday. Uh, last time I can ever think about Suki and Hana even making three times. The first time when she dropped that song that made her go viral. You know, she entered the, the adult entertainment business with her boyfriend. That was the second time. And now in this. So, I mean... She usually, she definitely uses her sexuality to sell herself. Not selling, saying she's selling sex. I'm saying she uses her sexuality to sell herself. Because in reality, we know sex sells. The sexualization of women and women sexualize themselves way more than guys do. I'm sorry. As a man, we're visual creatures. At least I can speak for myself. I'm a visual person. But the way you present yourself to me is the way I'm going to, you know, take you. So, if, you know, you only give me Suki Hana, then that's, should I treat you like a, a senator? I'm not saying treat you disrespectful. I'm not saying that. But you present yourself in a manner to which, you know, may not take you as serious. But that video, recommend y'all go watch it. So on Twitter, you know, drop them in them comments below. Drop them here and let me know what y'all think. Let me know what y'all think of uh, that video because, whoo, they definitely was getting it in. They definitely was getting it in. I can't even lie about that one right there. Mm -mm. Like, man, Suki. Suki. You ain't my cup of tea, but you somebody's cup of tea. <laughs> you your man's cup of tea. You know, you got your man. Shout out to him. Shout out to y'all. Y'all do y'all thing. I'm just going to stay my ass here on the sideline. Uh, so on to the next story. Some more of that bullshit. Have y'all heard of Bishop Sycamore High School? Yeah, I'm waiting for somebody to come back and tell me if they've heard of this school before this scandal. Because, boy, was it a weird scandal. Apparently, it's a high school who had uh, guys who were supposed to be junior college players on their team. Uh, their coach has an uh, arrest warrant out for them. Uh, some of these guys were playing for a high school in Ohio, and they were from, like, Florida. And they still got their ass whipped. They got embarrassed. They faked the. Uh, they lied about the uh, accomplishments of their program. And apparently, I guess nobody double checked it until the game came on and they saw IMG Academy spank them. I'm talking about put spankings on national television. They beat them bad. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the story. Let's, let's hear what the newscasters have to say about it. I don't understand how this could, could possibly have occurred. Some of these guys are like 20 years old, man. They've been in a JUCO before. 20 years old, played in JUCO, came back to high school, still got that ass whooped. 
What is going on? How much did you know much uh, about uh, Bishop Sycamore, Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. That's amazing. Because that's in Columbus, by the way, which is where I, where I reside. You going to send your kids? First, <laughs> yeah, exactly. First of all, here's the irony of that. Like, you know, I'm not Catholic. My wife's half Catholic. We send our kids you know, to Catholic school last year during the pandemic because they were in school all five days. And, you know, when you talk about these schools, like, you know, to be canonized, you have to have been a person. And so like you have like St. <laughs> Francis de Sales, like in Waterson, St. Ed's and all these different, you know, people like you can't really canonize a tree like St. Sycamore, like Bishop <laughs> Sycamore. Like, what the heck is that? And that should have probably been the first red flag that everybody had. And then also I, I've had people, we were talking about this on my morning radio show in Columbus. I've got you know, my neighbors started texting me like, yeah, I saw these guys practicing at some of our junior high fields on Saturday morning and this and that. I'm like, you serious? Like, oh yeah, they had the same uniforms on there wearing in the game. I caught a little bit of it. And <laughs> the it's, night before. It is, the <laughs> night before. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable to think that this is where we are in 2021 and you could fabricate all this stuff. And then ESPN went with it and put it on. Like they had to have some idea leading into that week. Then I know Tom Luganville, who does a great job. Like he definitely probably smelled a rat and they were just probably so invested in it. Like, I don't know what you could do, you know, four or five days out. If you realize that it's you know really not a school. It's like, hey, do they have a team? Are they going to play? Can we put it on air? Okay, I guess, I guess we'll just kind of roll with it. But, I mean, they played IMG last year. You know, they're supposed to have more games here the rest of the season. They played Akron Hoban, which is a big, you know, big school, which is also, I believe, a Catholic school. So you would think the diocese would have some sort of conversation, like who you tied in with here. Like it, it, it is unbelievable that this will eventually probably end up being – like a 30 for 30 yes. that was aired on ESPN by ESPN. So they'll be able to fully <laughs> complete the content loop and make their own stuff. Hey, now that's crazy. This will definitely be an interesting 30 for 30 story. Uh, 30 for 30s, those are like really, some are, uh, are documentaries. They usually encompass about an hour, no more than two hours. But they get into really good detail of sports events. And that's going to be one of them things. Again, Bishop Sycamore fake players, uh, ages. They had out of state people. They had people with warrants. The coach had a warrant, and yet they still end up playing some of the best schools in America. They ended up getting on ESPN. Somebody should have been checking. Somebody, if there was a failure in somebody's job, along so many lines, to even have these kids put in position to be playing these guys. They shouldn't be on the field, but yet. Like you said, you were able to commit fraud and even make it to ESPN, but they got their ass whipped. No, I, mean, I completely agree. And and I was driving home from the show yesterday. We had a big discussion about this yesterday. As everybody did. I'm sure you did too And this morning. But not only was ESPN fooled, IMG Academy was fooled into playing them. Like I, uh, that, that went way over my head yesterday, and I was driving home thinking, this is, a, this is a, a, a football program that will fly across the country and play literally anybody. They don't want to fly across the country and win 50 to nothing. At least I don't, I don't think they do. And 58 nothing, whatever it might be, they, they want more of a challenge than that. They can find that in their home state. To, to me, it was bizarre that, that Bishop Sycamore has fooled everyone, not just a TV network that picked up their game, but even a team that's willing to schedule them out of state. I, I mean, it's the great ruse. It's like the emperor has no clothes. Like, I, I don't know in 2021, with all the documents and everything that's going on, how you could possibly fabricate this. And they're not the only team that they played. I mean, they've been doing this. There was a guy who I know who uh, – I who reached out to me on social media. He coached in the de the co same conference that my dad coached in. It's like, I left the school I was at. I was there last year. And after three games, like we weren't getting paid. I wasn't really sure who these kids were. If they went to class, he's like, so me and two of the other coaches quit. Like this has been going on now for, for not just this year, but multiple years that they've been tricking people and fooling these schools. And I would have to think that at some point in time, in 2021, you would need some sort of documentation. The ease that we can PDF stuff and just scan and send it to people all over the place. That It's not like it's carried by the Pony Express or a passenger pigeon, for heaven's sake. <laughs> I, I don't understand how this could, could possibly have occurred. Some of these guys are like 20 years old, man. They've been in a juco. I ain't giving them more details to the story, but I, I definitely agree. Like They faked it till they make it. That, that's like a perfect example of faking it till you make it. Like, they continuously played some of the best schools in the state of Ohio. They had some out-of-town games. 
and they faked it. Like you said, they just printed up some PDFs and went with it. Like, and the world believed them. ESPN, come on, guys. You got to do better than that. You have to do much better than that. Uh, this story right here I find really interesting. Uh, you heard of Rich Paul. You know, uh, you know that he has a, he's LeBron's right hand. He not only is LeBron's right hand, he has one of the biggest sports agencies in the world. LeBron put him in a position to conquer the world, and he's been conquering it. But now he has some allegations of him being a, a bad agent, you know, having some mismanagement. And I have a video right here for us to dissect and get into so we can see who is right and who's wrong in this situation. Because Anerly Noel felt like he was cheated. Dallas offered him almost, uh, what was it, over $20 million a year, I believe, something like that, over four years. He takes advice from his agent, he says. He turns down the deal. Uh, because they believe in free agency, they're going to get more money. But he ends up getting suspended for smoking weed. He gets injured, and he now sees nowhere near that amount of money that he turned down. Again, do not fumble the bag. You're betting on yourself. You better be putting in every single last effort to make sure you get everything you want. When you bet on yourself, make sure you put the work in, because if you don't, you're going to end up on my show being one of these stories. I don't want you to be one of these stories. I want to see you winning. I want to see you be a winner, winner, chicken dinner. You know what I'm saying? But let's get into the story. It's the summer of 2017. Nerlens Noel just rejected a four-year, $70 million contract. Or did he? Was it really his decision? Fast forward a few years later and he files a lawsuit against his former agent, Rich Paul and Clutch Sports, claiming that they were unresponsive to teams trying to contact him. Basically, what happened was Noel claimed that Paul cost him $58 million in potential earnings. That $70 million contract was offered by the Mavs, quite a hefty one too, a huge overpay for Noel, but regardless, it was offered to him. I remember how shocked everyone was that he rejected it, considering he just averaged a mere 9 points and 6 rebounds. 9 points and 6 rebounds and they threw the bag at that boy. If you don't take the money and run. See, it's one thing for when you're already out here doing, you you out here balling, balling. I feel like there's so many guys who can replicate those numbers you gave. You weren't a star, you weren't an all-star, you weren't a superstar, it was nothing with star beside you, but you were about to get paid like one, like a valuable contributor to a team. Again, your team overvalued you, overvalued you at that time. Based on their perceptions, they believe you would continue to grow into the person they needed you to be. Ooh, when you first should have saw that contract, you should have said, oh, yeah, sign it now. I ain't even averaged over 10 points a game in my career yet. Sign that deal now. Now. Don't wait now. So I see if he's mad. I see how you can get mad. Let's let's go home and finish this video because I would have took the money and ran. Ain't no question about it. Thank you. Come again. I'm out. That's when the conflict started to occur, and that's why this lawsuit was brought up, which I'll talk about more in depth later. Maybe this was just a mishap, but it wasn't. It wasn't the first time Paul and Clutch Sports found themselves in some controversy. On the other hand, Clutch Sports has impacted the entire free agency landscape and brought in their own methods of negotiation and management. Maybe it's jealousy that other agents struggle climbing the ladder while Paul has the advantage of being friends with LeBron. How's going, folks? Now, for those in those situations, guess what? Us as black Americans usually have to deal with the nepotism and not everybody being qualified. But when LeBron gave his man, he made sure his man got qualified because, he, he, you know, he sent them to school. Uh... He put them in positions for interns and all that. It's not like he came in this super unqualified. No, he grinded. 
He got opportunities presented, and he earned it. So people just want to hate because of the way LeBron dominates off the court. He put his boys in position to win for generational success. Do not hate on that. Do not. You can't hate on that. That's why he, off the court, LeBron's the GOAT to me. Nobody can mess with his personality off the court. My name's Andy, and today, let's talk everything about Rich Paul and Clutch Sports. This Noel lawsuit and their history of past conflicts, but also how they've rapidly changed the free agency game. For better or worse. I'm going to say for and worse. For worse. Now, this is one thing I will be critical of. They made the game a lot worse, in my opinion. Uh... I don't want to say players shouldn't be restricted from moving to where they want to move because guess what? You should be able to move the way you want to move. But some moves that people tend to make is really suspect now because it's not like I want to lead my team. I want uh I got to have a superstar, co-star. But like some people, you know, they just grow together. And if you're great, you elevate people's games. That's what I believe great people do. You elevate the people around you. So if you truly want to be considered great, you don't take the easy path. Take the path everybody else had to deal with. You either won or you lost based on what you had. And if you, you know, you know other players from the past saying, hey, go hop over here and here to become the GOAT. No, we don't tell them to do that. We don't. Who does that? Not me. That's only for, you know, my LeBron Avengers. Okay, back to the Noel situation. In the 2017 offseason, Paul suggested that Noel reject the offer and instead take a one-year deal to try and go for a $100 million max. He thought he was going to hit that boy to max. And he don't even give me 10 rebounds. He don't score 10 points. Yeah, I would have been mad too. The year after, in the summer of 2018. And so Noel listened to him and passed up that $70 million offer. But after a horrendous season where he got injured and missed 30 games, Noel entered the 2018 offseason with very few suitors. Not only that, but Noel claimed that Rich Paul began to lose interest in him as a client. According to his lawsuit, Noel claimed that other teams tried to reach out to offer him something, but Paul would not respond to their calls. That's a breach of contract between the player and agent because agents are fiduciaries meaning they have an obligation to represent their players and get the best deal possible. If Paul did not work in Noel's best interest and try as hard as possible to represent him, then Noel has the right to sue. This wasn't the first time Noel took a jab at Clutch Sports. In late 2020, he stated that he, quote, learned that Paul had a history of mismanaging and ignoring other less notable clients, such as Norris Cole and Shabazz Muhammad, and costing them significant money. All right, so that's interesting right there. Uh, you definitely can't do that. Uh, this is also why you have options to shop around for agents too as well, you know, to try to find the best fit. But again, an agent is a fiduciary. Meaning they have to always do their best to get the best value for you. And telling that boy turn on that money when he had them piss poor numbers, that is not being a fiduciary in that instance. Like, we're going to get you $100 million. With he, all of a sudden, he's going to lead the league in blocks? Going to start grabbing some boards? Come on, agent. Come on. It's one thing when, you know, you have somebody who's been putting in work. They've been growing every single year. I.e. when Gilbert turned down his money with Golden State. Gilbert had been growing every single year. He's been building and building and building. And now he's at the point where it's time for him to get paid. I can either take this short bag or bet on myself when I can show I've grown every single year. In that instance, Gilbert Arenas made the smartest decision on betting on himself and coming to the Wizards. That's when you bet on yourself. But when you have a chance to hit a lick, no, uh, Nerlens Noel should have hit that lick. Now he can fumble the bag. We gotta stop fumbling the bag. Stop becoming the lick and hit that lick. You know what I'm saying? Hit the lick. Hit the money. Get the bag. Don't fumble it. Get the bag. If true, that's honestly a really bad look. Paul fired back and stated Noel owed him two hundred thousand dollars in management fees. Though it's a far stretch compared to what he cost Noel. Uh. You were supposed to get me a $100 million deal. I don't know if I want to pay your agent fees and I don't have $100 million in my bank account right now. 
I was told one thing and you did another, but now you saying I owe you money. You told me you were going to give me $100 million. Why should I pay you $250,000 when you didn't give me my $100 million? And I didn't even get that $80 million that was there. Furthermore, as I mentioned earlier, it certainly wasn't the first time Paul got caught in a pickle. The year prior, in 2019, a few anonymous NBA agents contacted Ben Standig and Mike Vorkanov of The Athletic for an interview. One of them claimed that the way Clutch Sports operates in free agency is predatory and illegal. Now, I know it's this facade that it's Rich Paul, but it's really LeBron who recruits for Rich Paul. LeBron has leveraged his popularity with young players by seducing them for Clutch, and it's not serving all the players well. But for the players that are suffering, there's no repercussion. All right, so I, I would also want to see some facts behind that from other agents coming out saying that because they could be hating. They could be hating. They don't want to see that black man win. They could be hating. Now, in the Nerlings Noel case, he fumbled the bag. He definitely fumbled the bag. Uh, He definitely fumbled the bag. They should have, like, some type of insurance policy to guarantee, you know, like they do in the NFL. I'm pretty sure they got that in uh, for basketball. He should have took out an insurance policy to make sure he makes up for the money he missed if he was to get injured. That's what they should have been doing. And you have to call out the players' union. They should be meeting with Rich Paul saying, what happened here? What happened here? If Rich Paul were a lawyer, he'd be disbarred five times. Ben Simmons, Darius Garland. You can seduce them, but you can't service them all, at that level with what they say they're doing. Nerlens Noel, Norris Cole, Shabazz Muhammad, they lost 80 million in Detroit. This is- I, I don't know about the Shabazz Muhammad story. I'm gonna have to look into that, but I don't know about him losing money because I've never seen Shabazz really, you know, turn it on like that. I mean, of course, Nerlens never turned it on like that, but he also had the money that he lost. But I don't remember Shabazz Mojave being offered that money. I'm gonna have to look into that, you know what I'm saying? Real talk. Normally, you should consider these quotes with a grain of salt, since it was another agent who made these comments. He could just be trying to get more clients and more business for himself by spewing out lies. However, because we know that even some players came out to speak negatively of Clutch, it's likely that this is true. Plus, it's rare to see players talk badly about their agents to begin with. So to have all these people talk about their bad experiences with them, maybe it's not a... Could it also be that the guys who are underperforming are looking at their agent like it's your fault? You know, they, All the guys complaining are usually the ones who've been uh, underperforming stars. You know what I'm saying? They were expected to do more and they didn't. That's not, kind of not on your agent what you do on the court. Or what you're doing the practice or any of that. The agent's supposed to get you the best deal. Now, if he made you fumble and miss money, that is his fault. But if you're not doing the production and the work on the court, that's your fault. Coincidence. As Rich Paul and Clutch Sports rapidly expanded over the years, their growth as a sports agency is unprecedented. They even started expanding to other sports, like baseball. Alex Bregman of the Houston Astros was represented by Title Sports Group, but his agency was bought out by Clutch. For a brief time, Bregman was represented by Clutch, but shortly after, Clutch announced they were doing a documentary series about the Astros' sign-stealing scandal. Now that's burnt out. I'm a Yankees fan. Shout out to my Yankees. And... Uh, that's crazy. So I don't know if you know about the Houston Astros uh, scandal. They cheated. They are cheaters. Cheaters. Cheater, cheater, pumpkin eaters. I hope that's not offensive. You know, a lot of them little slogans and childhood things that we learn, we turn, you go look up the history like, man, that shit came from something racist. Damn you, white supremacy. Y'all had a stranglehold on the amount of racism And y'all pushed into childhood shit It's so easy to correct kids When you know You negatively affect their psychology that way But I don't want to digress The Houston Astros were big time cheaters And uh, I was actually inside The club one time I'm supposed to be partying As I watch uh, Chapman throw uh, To Atuve if I'm not mistaken And Atuve hits the home run to send the Astros to the World Series Could have cried right there My heart hit my it Hit the bottom of my stomach just so fast 
with one swing that we found out they were cheating on. Breaks my heart, you know what I'm saying, as a Yankees fan. So close to a championship. So close. And that was like Aaron Judge's rookie year, I believe. Should have been MVP. I believe Atuve won MVP that year. He should have been MVP. He didn't have none of the manufactured cheating shit around him. But, you know, that's a whole different story right there. This made it quite an uncomfortable situation because Bregman still played for the Astros. So he cut ties with Clutch. Another situation in 2019 where the NCAA considered new regulations to require agents to have at least a bachelor's degree, that quickly got shut down. Alright, that is kind of BS. Again, when the black man gets here and he starts running shit, now we need new requirements. Now we gotta change the rules to the game. Shut the fuck up. I hate that. I hate y'all. I hate y'all when y'all do that. Y'all don't even want an equal playing field. You don't believe in capitalism. You believe in socialism for the people you want it for. Ah. All these years, you did not need this requirement. Now you get a black man dominating. Now you want to change the rules to the game. Ah. Whoo. Crazy. Paul, who dropped out of college in his freshman year, was quite vocal about this, saying that this rule would disadvantage those who are underprivileged and cannot afford to go to college, specifically among people of color where the wealth disparity is quite high. It was even coined the Rich Paul rule, as the media believed it was specifically targeted towards him. Uh, sounds like it's uh, targeted towards him. I've never seen a group of agents come out and do like hit pieces on Drew Rosenhaus or uh, Drew Rosenhaus is just a name that uh, is it Scott Boris? I don't see any hit pieces about those people and they dominate and they definitely manipulate everything around their industries. But again, of course, it's a double standard for the black man. Rich, I'm riding with you with all the, the uh, other shit they coming at you with. But, you know, you did definitely have that boy fumble the bag. I'm riding with you so far. Like, come on. I'm riding with you. Your niggas underperform. That's kind of their fault. They need to do production on the court so you can give them the best deal. But don't tell them to fumble the bag when they hit the lick. That's your fault. Stop him from talking to college players. It happened after the incident with Darius Baisley whom Paul convinced not to go to Syracuse and instead accept a $1 million internship with New Balance. That was smart. NCAA makes money off the backs of black athletes. A ton of black athletes. And even if you're not a star, you contribute so much to the value Bray uh, brought in from athletics. Most of the bodies are replaceable. That is true. That is true. So if you're in a position to make a million dollars and still, because uh, he, he finessed. I believe he went to the G League after this. He definitely finessed. But if I'm able to get a million dollars from New Balance, I'm going to go take that million dollars from New Balance. I mean, shit, I can go back to college whenever I want after I get my million dollars. I can afford college myself then. But y'all want me to be in the dorm rooms eating noodles? Rich, <clears throat> I'm 100% riding with you so far in this story. Minus fumbling the bag for Noel. I'm 100% behind you because it just sounds like they're hating on the black man in this case right now. And then immediately joined the G League. To be fair, the NCAA was probably just pissed off that they couldn't get a high caliber player and, you know, generate revenue for the league. I'm with Paul on this one. So with all this being said, what exactly separates Clutch Sports from other agencies? What are they doing differently that's making them so successful? In addition to what was mentioned earlier about, you know, having connections to LeBron, when Rich Paul founded Clutch Sports in 2012, he had one goal. To empower the players. For a long time, NBA players, even superstars, had a very little influence on the upper management of the teams they played for. While many of them earn boatloads of money, they're not in control of their own destiny. However, after Paul witnessed LeBron's decision in 2010, he heard all the stuff the media said about him. 
We all know it was kinda egotistical of LeBron to film a one hour long TV show, just to announce his free agency decision. And I'd say it's okay to criticize. Definitely was, uh, rightly so criticized, because I would never agree with the decision. I would never agree with the decision. Never, ever, 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 ever would I tell the person who's the best at what they do to go join other people who aren't the best at what they do. They good. Wade is one of the greatest players I've seen play. But I would not leave my team to win the championship on another man's team when I want to be the best. It's like KD. He won championships on Steph Curry's team. On Steph's team. He didn't win on his team. He went on Steph's team. Should I really consider his rings the same? Nah. I won't do it. I won't do it. Some people will, but I won't. I won't. You know, I won't. As him for that, but what drove Paul over the edge was comments like this from Bill Simmons. I blame the lack of a father figure in his life. Really? Did he Ooh, Bill Simmons, boy, I have a love for you, my guy. But what do you mean saying you blame the lack of a father figure in his life? Hey, some comments you keep to yourself even if you feel it, because again, it's you're right now you're in the same boat as Shikari. Now you're coming off uh, really bad. You're coming off really bad saying that quote. I love you, Bill Simmons. Well, I mean, psh, I don't know you personally. I like your work. I love the work you've put together. I don't know you. And this quote makes me question, do I know you? Because you should know. Shouldn't have said that out loud. You shouldn't have. Uh, and I won't even say it's a lack of a father figure. Somebody should have just said, hey, if you want to be the GOAT, don't leave your team. Drown with the ship Because if you bring one championship to Cleveland You're forever goaded No matter where you want to lift You're forever goaded, bruh Forever goaded You're already dominating And then you did the impossible You're already goaded But you just took the cheap way out I wouldn't have said that uh, Should have had a father figure in his life Come on, Bill Simmons Quiet You really have to say that? Is the lack of a father figure The reason why LeBron Wanted to join the Miami Heat? That doesn't make sense not just him, but even other teams and opposing executives jumped in on the action, calling LeBron selfish, even though he's doing what he wants to do and what's best for himself. It's not like he killed somebody, he just joined another team. If this motivated Paul to leave his previous agency and create Clutch and took LeBron with him. He wanted to produce his own brand, to empower his players and to normalize the concept of finding their own path, without worrying what everyone else wants to see. LeBron and Paul, they go way back. They met in 2002, where LeBron saw him selling vintage sports jerseys out of the back of his truck. Over the years, they stayed in touch and Paul eventually became part of LeBron's inner circle. You might say he got lucky, but everyone needs a little luck to get started. Despite Paul's questionable tactics, he still worked his tail off to build a successful empire. This relationship also drew criticism, as you saw earlier, with opposing agents not happy that such a high-profile player has a personal friendship with an agent who came out of nowhere. Let's be honest though, it's mostly because of jealousy. Paul can leverage LeBron's influence to benefit his own brand, while other agents can't. Over the years, he became known for being an extremely cutthroat agent. An article from The New Yorker described him as a guy, quote, known for driving hard bargains, especially on behalf of LeBron's teammates. Perhaps the most noteworthy example of his playbook was Anthony Davis. In his last season in New Orleans, Paul made a public demand for Davis to be traded. Not only did that violate the NBA rules, since Davis was still under contract, but Paul also made it very clear that he would not accept any destination except for LA. At the time, plenty of teams wanted him. Boston, New York, they were both viable options, and put out offers on the table. Due to Paul's aggressive push to get Davis to LA, and his refusal to accept any other offer, both the Pelicans and Lakers had no choice but to commit to a deal. And again, another thing I don't agree with Rich Paul, that is bullshit right there. So if your player don't want to play for his team, that's one thing. But to say he's only going to go to one destination that would benefit your boy, 
Now y'all manipulating the game in order for LeBron to be better. That's not really player empowerment. That's making sure LeBron comes out on the top at the end. Now, okay, I got two things I'm against you with on that one. If you're going to force a trade, that's cool. I don't want to play for these guys. I don't want to work for them. But there are 29 other teams. To automatically say there are only going to be four or five destinations we can ever go to, you're going to create uh, you're going to make basketball worse And that's my problem with LeBron And the free agency thing So I guess LeBron I mean The uh, Noel The uh, free agency upgrades uh, And Anthony Davis So oh, those three knocks on him so far in this video You know what I'm saying uh, I want to finish the rest of this You know I got other things I want to talk about This has been a pretty long show Uh, Yeah Rich Rich, I'm not gonna hold everything against you, but you definitely look bad in the uh Noel situation. Do not fumble the bag. That's kind of been the theme for today. Don't fumble the bag and don't be a lit. Hit the lit. I just don't understand. Uh, why would you turn down that money for that boy? You knew he should have took that bag. But it's time for TV talk because I got a new show that I watched, and boy, was it good. I don't want to give away too many spoilers, but go watch Clickbait. Watch it. It's really, really, really good. And the ending will surprise you. It's definitely a, a lot of plot twists within the show. It's good from episode one. It, it grabs your attention from episode one. And it's only eight episodes on Netflix. It's been number one on Netflix, I guess, for like the past like week and a half, something like that. Really good show. I recommend it. Go watch it now. Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, I can't wait for football. I uh, you know football come back. Come be. That's all we're gonna talk about. That's all we're gonna talk about. We're a week away. The countdown. But yeah. Uh, thank you for tuning in. This has been another great episode of the Lime Show. Uh, you know, shout out to my flosses. Shout out to the flaw sets. <laughs> the ladies, you hear me? Shout out to y'all. I appreciate y'all listening. Make sure you go like, subscribe, comment, and share. If you do those things, you help, you know, boost me, get me to a bigger audience, you know. Makes it easier for me to do my job. If you want to support the show, go ahead and hit that cash out. Links in the bio. You can hit me through PayPal too. Links in the bio. Uh, make sure you go use the promo code FLOSS1 at JK Distro. I'm going to get you some amazing Delta 8 weed. Can't beat that. Use promo code FLOSS1. Uh, and for your on-the-go needs, make sure you hit up Chat Flaws and use promo code FLOSSES. It's going to be down in the bio. Save you some money on that. You can keep you some chapstick and floss on the go. It's the perfect combination for when you're just out and about. No chap lips, no food in your teeth. You all here looking pretty. That's what we want. So once again, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you guys. Have a great weekend. I might come back early before the weekend out. But again, remember, we all are Canadian for a day.